Fibonacci tutorial part one retracements. Okay, if you would like to know more, please do check out the Financial Freedom Masterclass, which is a full 48 module masterclass designed by someone who's been looking at these charts for over 10 years. And it really is probably the most precise, concise and detailed course for anyone looking to analyze, trade and invest in the stock market. Everything is there. We also have a mini Financial Freedom Masterclass for those who do not want access to the options and the future strategies. Personally, I think it's all very, very useful. You won't find anything like that that's out there. Get it while it's still available. Okay, this follows on from the Elliott Wave tutorial video that we've already done, where we've looked at Elliott Wave and all of its different patterns that it can form, from impulses to corrections to diagonals. Now, how do we merge this together with Fibonacci? Well, Fibonacci was a mathematician back in the 1100s in Italy and he derived basically the Fibonacci sequence. So we start off with the two bin binary numbers. All we need to do to get the next number in this sequence is to add the two preceding numbers. So of course 0 plus 1 makes 1, 1 plus 1 makes 2, 1 plus 2 makes 3, 2 plus 3 makes 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. That's the Fibonacci sequence. How exactly do we derive the ratios? Well, essentially, if we continue this sequence onto infinity and divide these numbers into each other, it gives us very important numbers. The most important of which, most important ratio is known as the golden ratio, the 0 0.618. This is probably the most important ratio to know about. Of course, the inverse of that or the reciprocal of that is 1 divided by 0 0.618, which basically gets you to 1.618. So 1.618 extension or projection, 0 0.618 retracement, those are the two most important numbers. Following on from that, by squaring these numbers, by square rooting these numbers, and by subtracting them from 1, we can then derive the full Fibonacci ratio sequence. I, I don't want to waste time here and square root all of them in, in front of you, but basically by doing that, we get the full Fibonacci ratio sequence as we are going to show you right now. Just to highlight, technically 0 0.5 is not a Fibonacci ratio at all okay because um it just isn't but we know historically from gan teaching back from the 1900s anything that retraces 50 percent is usually a good time to at least look at starting a position is usually a good how you could say turning point that's just something to know i personally always have two on the extension ratios are 0.5 because they do get hit quite a number of times okay it's very important for me if i'm looking at a c wave to know not only where the 1.618 extension is where the two extension is i.e where it is double the logarithmic length of the first wave so let's now uncover how exactly do we plot all of this in to our fibonacci retracement tool well if we come over here to the left hand side, which you can't see on your screen, there's a drop down menu here, Fibonacci retracement. To get that into my shortcut toolbar at the bottom of the screen, I simply press the star button. And this is the Fibonacci retracement tool. So what we need to do is basically pause the screen and give everyone access to all of the ratios that I use. This is basically all of the ratios that, that are used um, for myself anyway, okay? I've seen the 0.272, I've seen the 4.236 and onwards. Um, of course, if you continue to square that, you can go to 11.14, I believe, upwards of 16. I don't think you, you need to go that far. Unbelievably, trading view actually allows us to have another three there's no point plotting too many on here but these are the ones that i use let's go through them zero 0 0.382 0 0.618 one 1.618 squared is 2.618 i square that again 1.236 1.382 there's your 1.618 i've also included negative retracements which as we will see are also very important so i've got the positive and I've got the negatives here too. There's your 1.618 again. 
Uh, I believe that might actually be on there twice, so we can just take that one off. 3.618, I don't often use this to be honest. After the 2.618, often I'm going for the square of that one more time to 4.236. This is on there um, just as a backup really, but honestly it's not used that often at all. 1.236, the 1.5, minus 1, minus 0.382 and the 1.13, which actually is the square root of 1.236. I would have to say... I use 1.13 very, very rarely, and I hardly ever use 3.618, but they are on there because I've noticed over time it's useful for me to have them on there and not just be looking for the 4.236 once it breaks the 2.618. It's important to have another one just between these two because the distance, depending on the asset, can be quite high in terms of new numerical value so those are the re the retracements that is exactly how i have them of course you can change the color the prices and the levels and there's coordinates and everything else with it so how exactly do we combine elliott wave and fibonacci well we have to start off by taking a look at a basic impulse and then we can look at corrections and projections after that so we have already learned the basic five wave impulse is something like this. There are three rules of Elliott wave. Four can't go into one, two can't cross below zero, three is not allowed to be the shortest. What we need to do then is once we've contained an impulse, once, once we've identified a presumed impulse here, which of course you don't really know after the fact um, as such, but if you see a good five wave sequence going up from a significant low, you could say, actually, that's five waves of a fractal of a part of a larger one. We need to start off from one side when we click with the left uh, button off the mouse and we go all the way to the upside. So notice, I'm not going back on myself here. I'm going to the top right hand corner of the screen. I'm moving to the right. I'm not moving to the left. Okay, That's not what you want to be doing here. You, you want to be moving from bottom left to top right because of course price um, is going to be presented on the screen from the right hand side, isn't it? So let's talk about these retracements. Well, this wave two retracement has a high probability of finding a turning point somewhere between the 0.5 i.e. the 50% and the 0.618. It is important at this junction to just mention that I am almost always on the log chart which of course I wasn't there for a short while. As it turns out we're on the British pound futures on the weekly chart probably doesn't make that much of a difference but on the longer term time horizons almost always I'm on the log chart. The retracement tool therefore has a button here. Now this didn't used to always be here up until a few years ago. They've added it in through great feedback through myself and everyone else who's looking at this. I don't find linear Fibonacci tools all that useful unless in specific circumstances which I discuss on the masterclass. Generally speaking, you want to be working on the log scale. Um, I use that for both my retracements and my um, projections and extensions. I'm working on a semi-log or log scale. So this must be clicked to log. Also, you want to log the chart. So the higher probability is that this wave 2, this presumed ABC wave 2, because uh, of course wave 2 cannot be a triangle. It can only be a flat or a zigzag. High probability it ends up somewhere between the 50 and the 0.618. I would say, roughly speaking, two thirds of the time it's going to end up in this zone. Okay, now I want to just add in something here because I notice I'm actually short of one important Fibonacci. So that was a bit of a schoolboy error there. Let's just add that in. Let's just add in the square root of 0 0.618, 0 0.786. I'm not too sure why that's been removed from here. Perhaps I made a mistake earlier on uh, prior to looking at this video, but that, that should ideally be on there. Um, the limit to the downside is probably the 0.618. If the wave 2 is falling below that, I'm probably not looking at a retracement. Once again, we call it a retracement because we are working within the location of the previous wave 1. Okay, We are effectively backtracking. We are retracing the move from here 
to here, let, let's say zero to 10, and it ends up at like, I don't know, four again. We're still within the confines of the previous wave one. We are retracing. Very low probability it should go below here. Likewise, very low probability it retraces less than a 0 0.382. If it retraces less than a 382, or more than a 0.786. I am honestly really doubting that I am indeed looking at a wave two and I'm probably probably looking at something a lot more complex. So higher probability is here, 33% probability it'll be here somewhere, 0.382, very low probability it's below here. So that's the wave two. Then we have the wave three. So let's just leave the wave three alone because we'll cover that on the next video. Let's discuss this wave 4. So, how do we know how far this is going to retrace? But we do the same process again, but rather than starting from 0 to 1, this wave 4, if you think about it, is retracing the confines of the previous wave 3, which is from here to here. It's not retracing everything from here to here, only retracing or pulling back this part of the wave, which means we have to start the retracement from the bottom of wave 2, go towards the top right hand corner and attach it to the top of wave 3. Obviously when you're looking at this on a chart, it's a good idea to use magnet tool, which you can't see on the left hand side of your screen because it's cut off on the editing, but it is there and it looks like a magnet. It will basically attach you right onto the pivot lows and the pivot highs. And before anyone asks, yes, the actual pivot highs and lows to me are very, very important. I use the wicks off the candles. I don't use the body. I need to be as precise as possible. Even if that means zooming in to a smaller time frame, I would do it. So statistically, this wave four, honestly, shouldn't really pull back below the 0.5. I usually like my wave 4s to be somewhere between the 0.236 and the 0.382. They're usually somewhere around here about 75% of the time. If the wave 4 is pulling back below 50%, number one, there's a tendency for the wave 5 to be truncated, basically because there's too much bearish action here and we're not able to get a proper wave 5 Um which is relative to ways one and three because we've pulled back too much in wave fours because the because um, the bears have taken over it shouldn't really pull back more than that often higher probability 0.382 and the 0.236 somewhere around there we've spoken about there may be alternation if this is a deep retracement this may be shallow if this is shallow this may very well be deep but regardless of alternation and everything else I don't like my wave 4s to drop below 50% of the wave 3. Likewise, I don't like my wave 2s to drop below 786, okay? I've got certain limitations as to what I'm looking at because then I have to really doubt as to whether I am indeed looking at a 1, 2, 3 because what I'm probably looking at, therefore, is an ABC and this might be part of another complex ABC like this rather than a genuine impulse. So, that is a quick summary into impulses and the retracements. Now, let's quickly go in to ABC legs. So we've spoken about the ABC legs, which are here, right? We're going to focus on triangles here, and we're going to focus on zigzags. So we've spoken about this can be a regular flat, an expanded flat, or a truncated flat, whatever you want to call it. This B leg in an, an in an expanded flat. How high can this go? Well, there's different schools of thought on this. First of all, how do we project an upside limitation to this B leg? I would start off here now, the top left, and work down on myself, right? Notice I'm coming down this time, right? Because I'm almost doing an extension here, right? So we're kind of moving on to the next module here, part two, but I, I, I want to bring it in now. Obviously, B is not a retracement, is it? It's extended past the point of um, zero. If it was here, it would be an extension. So what I tend to do, rather than work with negatives, I tend to start top left and work down to the bottom right. There is debate now here, okay, between 
elite wave technicians i'm not a purist here by any means as you can see you know i've developed everything that you need to know here right elliot wave and fibonacci are a big part of it don't get me wrong but there's also price action there's volume and there's auction market theory there's four parts to analyzing the stock market it's not just elliot wave and fibonacci those who only rely on elliot wave then they're never going to get anywhere and usually they don't get anywhere the ones who do very well are the ones who are swing trading this stock market two days to six weeks and they understand the other three areas too but let's carry on it's never a good idea to rely on only one form of analysis that's not going to get you anywhere but let's just carry on with this video here because this is important for what it's worth all i'm saying is don't rely too much only on elliott wave there are other tools you can use like horizontal levels auction market theory and volume some people say look it shouldn't go past the point 1.6 when and certainly that is that is that that would be true there's no way i'm going to say that i'm looking at a expanded flat if this retraces more than 1.618 extension of this leg here usually i like this to be somewhere between the 1.236 and 1.382 past the 1.382 honestly i'm getting quite concerned i'm even looking at an expanded flat but really that would be the upside limitation if it breaks above here you're probably not looking at an expanded flat so that would be the deal with um, an ABC flat coming down and this C leg of course we can project using our other tool which I'll probably mention on the next um, video which is trend based fib extension when we move on to the zigzag we look at the B leg here and this B leg as you may have um, figured out is usually a 50% retracement of the wave a once again top left bottom right we are retracing we are backtracking the confines of the wave a it usually ends up here it's quite common for this b wave to end up somewhere around the 50 or the 0.618 once again much like a wave two really if the wave b only retraces let's say 0.236 it's probably not a wave b if it's retraced more than 0.618 sorry more than 0.786 i'm probably looking more like an expanded flat so i want to see a three wave correction going into the 50 before i decide on the next leg down which is probably something like this so those are zigzags and that is the retracement tool what else can we show here whilst we are here without getting things too confusing what we can do now we can have a look at a triangle and really it very much depends on what triangle you are looking at obviously we discuss much more detail of this in the masterclass I, I, I don't think as part of a simple tutorial on youtube we want to go too much into this but you can also use the retracement tool here and for a classic triangle there is the theory that the b legs and every and every subsequent leg after that will retrace 0.618 of the leg prior so this b leg will be 0.618 of the a leg right this c leg will be 0.618 of the b leg i'm hoping everything is making sense here right i'm just retracing and contracting this triangle to a 0.618 obviously there are variations of this and i don't want to get things too confusing here for those who are perhaps watching my videos for the first time and that is a truncation uh well it's not a truncation it's a 0.618 and this e leg can also be a 0.618 okay like i said the most important number to remember here is the 0.618 and the 50 percent is very important even though it's not a fibonacci number it is very important this then takes the shape of a classical you know symmetrical contracting triangle if you will right where each leg is essentially 61.8 percent or 0.618 off the previous leg yeah that's how we get those different shapes of course there are many variations of the triangles which once again if you would like to know more check out the master class so that is the conclusion to part one i don't want to get things too confusing in part two we're going to bring in the next fibonacci extension and projection tool and we can then move forward so i'll catch you guys on the next module.